Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Game to the Comp video, we're once again going to be going to be discussing AMD's Zen processors. As of the time I'm recording this, which is the 10th of December 2017, it is just three days away before AMD officially unveil Zen and perhaps some other technology as well at the New Horizon event. So of course, ahead of this, we're already seeing a few leaks, and one of those is Nepal's 16-core processor images have appeared on the internet. This is also an article, I've linked it in the video description should you desire to check that out as well. Now, I find this set of images really interesting for a couple of reasons. The first is their sheer size, and I mean both physically and what they represent inside the SOC, we'll get into that in just a moment, as well as the fact that AMD are obviously becoming a lot more confident in their progression with Zen. So let's let's start discussing this. So 16 cores, which means 32 threads, actually sounds very impressive, particularly when one considers that this is also bolted on with a whole bunch of Radeon Pro cores. Now, Nepal's, as you're probably aware, is for servers, which means it could be for anything for HPC usage. For example, oh, I don't know, um, high-performance computing could be 3D graphics, it could be everything from calculating the density of a star all the way down to a simple server, for example, a virtual machine uh, running, I don't know, a simple web page, or pretty much anything or anything in between. Everything or anything in between, excuse me. So, 16 cores, 32 threads, sounds impressive, but it's not as impressive as AMD's top offering. Now, that is said to be 32 Zen cores, and once again, a whole bunch of Radeon Pro um, graphics cores. And this means up to 64 threads total, thanks to SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. To put this into any level of perspective, the E78890V4, I'll repeat that one more time, the E78890V4, represents Intel's crowning jewel of server processors. But it only, and I have massive quotation marks around the only, has a, CP, uh, has a core configuration of 24, so that's uh, 48 threads. Now, obviously there are some questions regarding Zen's clock speed and how it's going to compare against Intel's server clock speeds, because frankly, we just don't know. I mean, I can tell you that the engineering sample of Zen is running at 3 gigahertz, but that's not indicative of either the desktop version or what the server core versions are going to run out. They could be slightly lower clock speed, especially when we talk about the cooling in just a moment, or they could be higher clock speed. We just don't know. But either way, in terms of core configuration, it's very impressive. So let's talk about this just for a moment because we can start we can start looking at the images and we can start saying, well, gee, this looks very impressive. So one thing's for certain, the processors obviously have a pretty robust heatsink um, put on them, but it's not it's not that huge. It's not, you know, it's not as big as perhaps you might expect for a for a uh, number of cores that you're finding inside the processor. And essentially it's quite low profile. So what we have here is a very simple core um, fan configuration. So basically air flows throughout the unit, it gets pushed through the heatsink, and then obviously is expelled in the rear. Um, it's pretty simple and server configuration, uh, sorry, servers have been using this in a very similar configuration for a number of uh, years now, and it's not, as I said, it's not a particularly new technology, but it does give us some indication, once again, that, that the heat of these processors is pretty manageable. Now, just so we're all clear, this processor is most likely, along with the rest of the um, server lineup, going to release at some point in Q2 or Q3. From what I understand and from what AMD have revealed to the public, the primary focus at the moment is their desktop lineup. Now I'm going to make a few assumptions, and obviously I, these are only assumptions because AMD haven't exactly told us the reason they're doing this, but I have a feeling it's because of a couple of reasons. One, the process they're first releasing is an 8-core version for Summit Ridge, which is 16 threads total. Now while that might sound impressive to us, 
For a server, it's not that impressive. So my guess is that the extra engineering time it's going to take them to A, add in all those cores and get them very stable and non-engineering samples, in other words, and of course to get all of the Radeon Pro cores and to actually get the final clock speeds and all the other bits and pieces, plus it's a lot harder to deal with um, getting vendor partners such as Dell, HP, Google, whomever else are going to buy the processors. It's a lot more of a long-term goal. So it makes sense for them to start leveraging the PR and the financial reward of selling to us, the average consumer. Now, that's a guess. That's a theory. Obviously, AMD haven't exactly said that on record, so don't quote me verbatim on it. But what we do see is a very... A very simplistic goal for AMD. They've been essentially working on these processors four to five years, depending on whether, you know, what release date they actually go for. It's about four to five years, and that's a long time. That's a long term investment. And obviously, they want to start benefiting from that as soon as possible, which is, well, pretty obvious. Now, the performance of these processors, I could once again tell you that the desktop version is. According to leaks, as well as some Intel's, um, sorry, some tests AMD have compete, uh, put against uh, Intel's i7 5960X and other processors of a roughly the same caliber, Zen, if running at the same clock speed, does slightly pip the Broadwell E's, for example, to the post. So it's going to definitely mean a very interesting time for customers. And by customers, I don't just mean you and I, who perhaps are going to buy a processor early next year or some point next year. It also represents AMD really being quite aggressive going for the server market. Now the server market is something Lisa Sue, as well as other folks at AMD have commented on multiple times, as well as uh, financial analysts. The reason it's so impressive is because it's worth so much money. Essentially servers are not only breaking down all of the time or being replaced all of the time, but more need to keep being added. And it's worth billions per year, billions upon billions upon billions. So even in conservative numbers, if AMD can get 5 or 20%, let's say 5 to 20% additional revenue from those server, from those customers. So in other words, they're selling, let's say, 5 or 20, 5, between 5 and 20% of all processors being sold were AMD. It represents a very stable, very robust income for AMD, which basically will set the company up for a number of years. And particularly because once again, they're working so hard on their GPU side of things, it basically means that we as end customers who are on the retail side get to benefit quite heavily from this. So I'm, I'm very interested. I think it's gonna be a very cool conference that would of course be New Horizon and I've said it before and I'll say it again I believe it's perhaps one of the more aptly named conferences out there so for of course for folks who are not running a server farm which I'm going to assume is probably the majority of you I don't know maybe I have a large audience who runs server farms I don't know uh, Nepal's might not be as interesting but it does represent confidence from AMD, at least theoretically, in their future. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it until the cows come home. I'm not necessarily pro-AMD. I'm not pro-Intel. I'm not pro-NVIDIA. I'm pro-all companies. Like, I think all companies have done bad. I think all companies have done good. And I just want all companies to be as competitive as possible. But it does mean that for us, for gamers especially, it's going to be a crazy couple of months in the early parts of 2017 because we know Kaby Lake is going to be released, we know Zen is going to be released, and we're hearing rumours about various GPUs, and it means that for the first time in quite a while, we should have quite a shake-up in the processor uh, market because at the moment, it's very easy for someone to recommend a processor. It's actually one of the reasons I've not done a buyer's guide for a while because it's pretty cut and dry. If you've got like 300 bucks... Uh, to spend on a processor, you're really between either buying a 6600K or a 6700K. If you've got perhaps a little more, then maybe you'll go with something along the lines of a 5820K or whatever. And if you don't have that amount of money, you might go on eBay and buy an older Haswell, or you might decide to go for an FX8350 or something, which does still represent really good value for money. 
it's not very difficult to put a buyer's guide together, to be honest. So I think next year is going to be a lot different. And we'll have to see. At the end of the day, I don't have a vested interest. AMD are not sponsoring me, not, nor are Intel or any other company. So I'll frankly buy or recommend the best processor, the best hardware to anyone. Because I'm servicing you, not them. But I do have quite a lot of hope that it is a very impressive piece of hardware. Because that, once again, gives us as customers a much better choice. Anyway... Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and apologies for sounding a little, I don't know, preachy or rambly towards the end. It was supposed to be a lot shorter than this, but it, alas, didn't really end up being. Uh, normal things, if you've liked the video, subscribe and all of that. We have a lot of hardware we need to review, including a couple of keyboards, a headset, which has just arrived, so we need to review those, as well as some other bits and pieces over the next couple of uh, weeks. So definitely stick with us throughout the Christmas period, and perhaps longer. I'll see you all soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.